Hello everybody, my name is Wes Gardner and I am a professional artist currently working in the entertainment, board game, and card game industries with credits that include Warhammer 40,000, Imagine FX Magazine, Warner Brothers, the card game Varia, and a lot of other stuff that's currently a non-disclosure agreement. But what we're going to be doing this time is we're going to be doing a time-lapse look at a landscape using mixed media within Rebel 5. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so welcome. Hope you're having a great holiday season. It's just a few days before Christmas as we film this. And yeah, had a lot of fun with this. Uh, hopefully you were able to see my first video here on the Escape Motions YouTube page where I talk about my two favorite features of Rebel 5. And then I did a narrated time lapse of kind of a John Singer Sargent-esque portrait study. Um, of, a, of an awesome model that we got and so that was a photo study this time we're working a little more from imagination which is something that you know in the creative field of imaginative realism is something that every once in a while you do want to kind of stretch out those imagination muscles and work out without a lot of reference just going based on what is in your mind so that's what we're doing here and a great way to do that is to kind of work chaotically um work you know order from chaos is what i like to call it and it, it's a method that i like to use if i don't have any ideas but i know kind of what the overall vibe of something is i like to work this way to where i'll just randomly put some colors and shapes on a canvas and then it's almost like looking up at clouds and seeing what clouds look like you can kind of make a picture out of the stuff that you just throw down on a canvas real quick um, and that way it's really flexible. You get used to problem solving in many different ways. It's just a lot of fun. It, it is a very, it can be either a relaxing way to work or a very stressful way to work, depending on what kind of artist you are. I'm a very observational artist. I like to look at what I'm painting. So working from imagination can sometimes be scary, but the only way to get better at something is to do it. So <laughs> that's what we're doing here. And with Rebel 5, it makes it very, very easy because there's so many options as far as media that you can use so on the previous video that i made for escape motions i did more of the oil and acrylic kind of thick impasto brush work um, very impressionistic in nature i'm going to keep with that impressionism vibe but i did want to start off with watercolor i don't use watercolor a lot i don't even use watercolor in traditional art because it scares me i'm very much a fan of being able to push stuff around but with watercolor, it dries so fast, you have to be very exact on where you want it, what your value is, what is your color. Uh, you have to plan ahead, and that's not something I'm super great at, <laughs> but hey, maybe that means I should do more of it uh, to kind of train my brain how to make decisions before I make decisions, if that makes sense. But that's where Rebel comes in. It's wonderful to be able to work with a watercolor engine that's so responsive and works so close to the real thing that I can almost like build up my confidence in Rebel before I break out my actual art supplies and do a, a full pass. Um, and of course, you can never tell water what to do. You know what I mean? It is nature, so it's going to have a mind of its own. But with Rebel, the options and the, the engine that they use is just so comprehensive that it feels very real. And as you can see, I'm putting on just random blocks of color and you can see that water just seeping into the canvas, making some really cool shapes that I didn't even plan for, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then after I see that, I kind of zoom out. I zoom in and out a little bit and see the shapes. And that's whenever I grab my trusty oil brushes, um, the oil brush and the acrylic engine and stuff in Rebel 5. I've loved it since Rebel 3. But I believe they added oils in Rebel 4, and now oils and acrylics are combined into one category, which makes sense. It does take a little bit of a learning curve to know which one's which. Um, but after using them for a bit, I'm, I'm realizing that the oil paints seem to have a little bit more impasto effect, while the acrylics run a little flatter. But that's kind of nice. Um, so we actually use more of those acrylic brushes in this one. I do a little bit near the end of the thicker uh, paint 
but I really like to stay within the flat brushes to make shapes and kind of carve those in. So that's probably what you're seeing right now. Um, I'm just looking at the layers of the piece. I'm not watching a time lapse back or anything. I'm just narrating what I remember. <laughs> um, so I kind of did this and thought, hey, what a neat place to kind of put a big mountain. It's maybe getting some light um, from the right hand side behind the big bushels of trees um, that are also on the right hand side. And I do kind of that curved C shape. I like to do the, the C shape and the S shape and maybe a Z shape to do a, a path going into a background. I've, you know, that's a very Bob Ross way to go about it, but I think it works. It's a great way to draw a viewer in uh, and it just works. It, it looks good, it's easy to do, it's a cool composition and it makes you want to explore, which, you know, as an imaginative artist, if I'm working in video games or card games or something like that, or like a tabletop role-playing game, I want you to look at the art and feel like you want to explore, that you want to take a journey, you want to, active you know be active in the world in which you're either experiencing or reading about or something like that so that's actually part of the job and um, using these tools makes it a lot of fun and something that i do after i put in these basic um kind of oil shapes and things like that i do something and this is kind of a creative hack if you ever want to check your values you know based on how light or dark something is you can do that very easily in Rebel, and actually a lot of digital art software. But uh, Rebel in particular, you can make a, you can just fill in a layer above your painting um, with either pure black or pure white, and then change that layer mode over to color mode, um, right where you see the pigment and opacity and the lock on that kind of lower right hand side where the layers are. Uh, you just click where it says normal over there to change your uh, blending mode. And change it over to color and what that does is it strips all the saturation or chroma out of the uh yeah so it strips the chroma which is the hue and also the saturation which is the amount of hue present and you're just left with the value that's all you're left with and it's pretty it's a pretty accurate representation because as an artist you know one of those learning curves if you're learning about color is that every color has its own intrinsic value so like fully saturated yellow is way brighter than fully saturated blue for instance um, in fact i would argue that blue or a kind of a blue violet is the darkest color on the color wheel to where if you had like a quote unquote midtone of that uh yeah or, or if you had a midtone of what it would say on a digital art software it would actually be super dark in that uh, in that blue violet area um, as but if you had a green that was midtone it would pretty be pretty close to actual midtone um, but anyways that's 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 a whole other art lesson <laughs> for, about color theory and stuff but um, but basically that's a good hack is if you get your color values um, or if you get your value layer put black or white on it and then change it to color mode it's going to help you out quite a bit. Um, and with the landscape, usually the rules that I follow is anything closer to us, closer to the viewer, is going to be darker in value. It's going to be more closer to the, the darks and the blacks and things. Um, and as you get further out, because of rules like atmospheric perspective, you're going to get lighter. Um, it's going to actually get more bright you're gonna get um you know maybe clouds are getting hit with some light and here i actually put some light on the right side of that very background mountain also creeping in into some of the rocks here in the foreground just to give that sense of i wonder what's behind these trees um, that way you want to kind of turn that corner so once i get the value set i actually refine the painting again using just values so the way i do that is i make a uh, layer above my value pass and then i will just color pick from that value layer so i stay in pure black and white um, or grayscale i should say and um, then i can paint i can refine shapes i can look at it um, i can see what works and what doesn't make sure that i'm following those rules to where if something is closer to me it does get darker um, and this is a great way you can really control what you have on your canvas and it's an awesome way to get your shape language down to make sure that you know the viewer's eye is going to go where you want it to a lot of your problem solving can be done in grayscale and uh that's a lot of fun and then um yeah just further go in and refine it i think with the 
first refinement layer, I do the thicker brushwork because I like the spontaneity of it. And then I go in through addition, uh, an additional layer with those acrylics and kind of smooth it out. I use the different blending modes on the brushes. So the blending modes being, you know, the paint and mix or paint and blend, uh, the just standard opaque paint, or even just use it as a blender. I do cover that in my previous video I made for Escape Motions. It's one of my favorite features. I love that every brush of every type has these distinct modes. Even your charcoals and your pastels have a way that they can blend. So if you really like the way a brush feels, you can use that brush four different ways and get an immaculate painting without even sw uh, swapping your brush tools at all. You know, um, just changing your brush mode. And I think that kind of flexibility is really incredible with the software. But once I get kind of happy with where I am refined, um, and, and a good way that I can tell if I'm on the right track is I keep my head up on the upper right corner where I have my navigator. I want to make sure that it can read well at that navigation size. Because a lot of my art, if I'm making art for a card game uh, like Varia, I am going to make sure that it reads at, you know, the one inch by two inch size because that's a size it's really going to print out on a card so that clarity of shape and, and value is very important for the way i work um, and because of the cool blending modes you can really do some amazing stuff to make sure those values sing the way you want them to um, and then what i do after i kind of refine those shapes is i come in with a basic oil paint and i do a color mode and this time I actually do pick colors. Um, I wanted to pick some cools for the shadows. So a lot of my blues and purples and um, maybe some darker greens uh, for those shadows, especially since we had the greens of the trees. I wanted to integrate that in there. And then you'll notice my lights, I keep fairly warm. I use oranges and yellows and reds. So I really do kind of cut that color wheel in half, keeping my shadows on the cool side and my highlights on the warm side and it gives a nice cohesive start to where I can start seeing the picture come together. Um, my goal lately, and my goal going into 2022, is to make art that can be done at any part of the process. And that's a, that's a tall ask, because I work kind of chaotically. So this is going to be a nice uh, way for me to get more comfortable, you know, let's say a sketch phase, or the, the basic value pass phase, to really work stuff till it's refined. And doing these color drop-ins like this, like I usually call them color splashes, just splashing in color on top of your, um, on top of your layers you already have, or glazing essentially in a traditional way. Um, you get a lot of flexibility, and you can really start working on your refinements before you push to final. And that's sort of what we do. So once we get those colors in there, then I go and adjust the colors a little more. I really make sure that I'm following the rules where the lights are warm, the cools, uh, or the shadows are cool. And then I just start rendering. I render out with a smaller brush set to paint and mix mode. That seems to be the one where I get, which is the second from the, from the left on your uh, paint modes. It seems to be the one that gives me the most traditional feel, as if I have oil or acrylic painting with a medium. And I really like how it feels, because it lets me do some strong shapes and some sharp edges. Uh, but then if I just hold down a little more pressure, it actually does mix in with pigments and paint that's already on the canvas. And um, after I do that refinement, after I do my first render pass, I come in and I add a color dodge layer. So this is more of a digital special effect. And where I add this is where I think the sun or the light coming from the sun is going to be the most vibrant. What I do is I pick a red or I pick a, a, a kind of that yellow orange and just get a big soft brush, almost an airbrush, and barely tap on the areas that I think are going to get the most dramatic light. And what that does, really what Color Dodge does is it ups the lightness of course but what it does is it finds areas where values change on anything underneath it so the corners of like the tree going against the sky or the rocks and like where the snow is on the rocks and 
it saturates them with a high intensity of that color. And it gives this really beautiful effect. You can also do the same thing in traditional painting by keeping your most highly saturated colors where there are value differences, where there are edges. Do those really bright colors where the edges are and you're gonna see a really cool kind of optical illusion of a color seeping through the air. It's really cool. Um, but after the color dodge, I just do a little bit. I went a little hog wild with it before and then I tapered it back a little. Um, yeah, really just hit the areas where the, the ground is circling around um, the rock formation and then also in the background where that uh, mountain is going into the trees in the back. I wanted to really provoke that sense of journey in there. And uh, then it's all about starting to push the final. So this is where I do grab some thicker brushes and really come in and start laying in some texture. I wanna lay in texture for the trees. I want that cool brush work. I want that really thick, nice impasto stuff. That way if I make prints of this, for instance, or you know, if Rebel uses this in advertising, you can really see those thick brushes. Now, normally I wouldn't work this thick, this late, but some of the most fun you're gonna have in Rebel is working with thick paint and using palette knives and pushing stuff around. So it's it's an absolute treat to do, which is why I did it this way. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and I did have a Windows update, good old Windows update. So this last layer I put on, um, which you'll see on the final, basically all I did is I took acrylics and then I darkened, um, I, I kept on a normal blending mode, but then I just did a color pick using the uh, alt button and I would alt and click and then pick the color and then darken it on the color wheel and then lay it in to put more shadow shapes within the trees, maybe some within the rocks, outline a little bit of things. So I don't think that part got picked up um, by the, uh, and, and, oh, and I added some trees on the um, kind of outskirts to tie the theme in together um, on that middle rock formation. Uh, they're, they're really splotchy trees though. I didn't want to really render them because they were far away. So I wanted to keep them kind of imaginative and um, but it really ties in the other trees, where if you see trees going all across the valley, um, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, I don't think that one picked up on the recording, but, um, you know, it, it was another maybe 10 minutes of painting. Really, really easy. Uh, I just went darker, and I put some little shapes in there for the trees and refined some of the shapes on the rocks. Nothing too fancy, so this is what I would hand an art director um, as like a preliminary sketch like if they ask for a color mood sketch i would feel comfortable handing this in and being like okay is this the type of vibe that we want it's kind of christmasy it has some reds and some greens and then those the, the whites and the blues are really kind of neutralizing everything which is good um and really directing the eye on where to go but i wanted to have a nice holiday feel and you know even some oranges creeped in there you know um just a lot of fun to work this way and like i said it is order from chaos you start off really chaotic you see if any of the paint on there looks like anything and then you start refining shapes and see where it gets you so overall i mean it's always a treat to use rebel especially rebel 5 i've loved it so no matter if you're interested in kind of the standard edition which has a lot of incredible stuff it has all the brush blending modes it has the new um there's a little color mixer panel that you can use i haven't even used that yet lord knows how much fun that's going to be um, <laughs> I mean, I'm into that type of stuff, so I'm, I'm excited to use it. Um, but, but yeah, this is kind of my standard work mode. So no matter if you have that standard edition or you have the pro edition oh, for the nano pixel and kind of that pigment um, layer uh, adjustment mode, which is great. I love it. I think it's definitely worth that price um, to get that. If you're into the traditional slash digital, how those two things bridge together, I think the pigment stuff is out of this world good but that's it for me um thank you so much to escape motions for having me be a featured rebel artist for the year 2022 and most importantly thank all of you who are watching this one for supporting escape motions they are a great company and um for really hanging out and making the world a better place by creating things i mean your voice is awesome your voice is valid i want to see all the cool stuff you make you know we all do so go out there, go make some amazing art, have a great 2022, and yeah, be sure to hit me up on socials and stuff. I think they're going to link to my YouTube on the comments, so if you want to hang out a little more, I would love to see you. But most importantly, pick up some Rebel 5, 
have some fun, bring your imagination to life, and, and go out there and be somebody, man. <laughs> Happy holidays. My name is Wes Gardner, and I will talk to you soon. Peace.